Last week, we talked about LGBT characters in children's shows, with an emphasis on the need to start treating gay relationships with the same mundanity that straight relationships have been afforded for centuries, and the need to start treating conservative pearl-clutching and neo-reactionary sea-lining with the same dismissive disregard that we treat any other conspiracy theorist. And at the end of that episode, I said we'd talk about which member of the main six I think would be the best decision to make into an LGBT character. What makes Rarity the best choice for a gay character, or in Rarity's case, bisexual, is that she does something that creates more opportunities for dynamic character interaction than any other member of the main six. She flirts. A lot. When she wants to, Rarity can turn on the charm to get what she wants. She's extremely cunning in that way. She also flirts when she genuinely finds somebody attractive, like most people do. And it's so common and comes so naturally to her that it can be reasonably implemented anywhere in a Rarity-centered episode. So having Rarity flirt with a mare once in a while not only would establish her as bisexual, but would give you countless opportunities to introduce bit characters who are also LGBT as well. Something that adds to the world and fits very organically and unintrusively into any episode. The idea of introducing Rarity flirting with mares for the same reason she flirts with Stallion is a lot like the idea of a gender select in The Legend of Zelda. It's so unintrusive that you have to work really fucking hard to find a way to object to it. You have to be a particularly special kind of asshole in order to pull that off, and it's flat out impossible to complain about it without making yourself look like a homophobic prick. It simply cannot be done. The act of flirting is so innocuous and already such an integral part of Rarity's character that no amount of coded language is going to weasel your way out of that. But it's not just the delightfully elegant way you can weave it into episodes and detect Republicans a mile away. Rarity has always been a character that breaks expectations. I talked about this in my Best Pony video. She is a woman who is extremely extravagant and must own every room she walks into and is never forced to go through unnecessary lessons in humility. She's a highly successful business mayor but never succumbs to any of the greedy corporate tropes that are rife in the animation industry. Hell, even in MLP itself. In fact, she's a combination business mayor and artist, a pairing you very often see in real life but don't often see portrayed on television. And because Rarity is the most traditionally feminine in the cast, and proud of that fact, she's the one you'd least expect to be bisexual, which means she is most definitely bisexual. That is literally her thing at this point. Also, here's a tweet from Tab of the Saint Germain that indicates Rarity might be taking a break from Stallions after the disaster she's had in the past. And by the laws of the internet, that means Rarity is actually five Ellens occupying one body. Rarity has so far been the character that DHX have never fucked up with. Her episodes are excellent, her characterization is so enjoyable and entertaining that it's impossible to get bored of her, and she has perhaps the best voice acting in the entire Silver Age of animation. And her entire existence has so far centered around taking things that are often associated with the superficial or shallow and putting genuine passion into it. Now, there's something of a caveat here. You see, Rainbow Dash is often assumed to be the group's resident gay character because she's sporty and tomboyish. Many people do in fact decry that as a blatantly harmful stereotype. And going instead with the most hyper-feminine character isn't exactly going to be a massive leap forward. For all my talk a moment ago about defying expectations, the lipstick lesbian is only the second most abused stereotype of gay people right after every single Disney villain ever. But a good counterpoint to that is because the main six are all derived from different extremes of different kinds of women, it's almost impossible to make one of them gay without putting a toe across the line of at least one stereotype. I mean, Pinkie Pie is a party girl, Twilight is a bookish librarian, Applejack is Zarya with a jersey tan. With Rarity, you at least have the opportunity to engage in some interesting scenes that have the potential for a lot of character development and world building. And the sheer number of opportunities is frankly endless. She's around other ponies constantly, she's the only one to show any interest in relationships whatsoever, and with the fact that she's made attempts at relationships that failed, you could put her in a situation where she enters a relationship with another mare and then have that relationship end. That's something I only recall happening once, and it was on Degrassi, so it was probably shit. Now, this does highlight a particular bugbear. Since 90% of the appeal of making Rarity bisexual lies in the fact that her flirtatious behavior gives you ample opportunity to set up numerous non sequiturs, we have to address the fact that Rarity's flirting is often a point of criticism for her character. To summarize a thousand half assed think pieces in a single movie clip Using feminine wiles to get what you want, trading on your looks. Read a book, sister. That passive aggressive number went out long ago. Chicks like you give women a bad name. Now, there are about a million problems with that sentiment when you try to apply it to rarity. First of all, flirting with someone to get what you want is the very definition of innocuous. You have to do some pretty elaborate mental gymnastics to consider that a primary character flaw. This isn't really on par with Fluttershy being cripplingly afraid of people, or Twilight has the anxiety of a gerbil in a daycare. This is more on par with stealing a cookie from the cookie jar. Second of all, if it were a major personality flaw, that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. There's one aspect of character design to remember. 100% pure and moral characters 
characters are piss fucking boring and you should never write them. I've always been somewhat confused by the all too common criticism of characters doing less than altruistic things in a show that is literally about making and learning from social faux pas. Even characters that are written to be morally upright good guys still do less than morally upright things. Captain America doing something selfish is literally the entire plot of Civil War. Thirdly, why the fuck are people making criticisms about a children's show character that sound like the kind of deranged bullshit you'd find in a friend zone rant? Do you people not hear yourselves when you're talking? That incredibly problematic aspect of the analysis community aside, Rarity is the character you'd get the most opportunity and enrichment out of if you were looking to incorporate LGBT themes into Friendship is Magic. Oftentimes, the little moments of a character are just as important and worthwhile as the big character-defining moments. And since Friendship is Magic has so far done its best to keep the main six from entering relationships, Rarity's flirtatious attitude is the best way to do that without breaking the theme of the show. I know I said this in the last video and at the start of this video, but it bears repeating because I know someone is going to bring it up anyway. In regards to the complaint about changing a character versus creating a new character, this isn't even changing anything because Rarity's orientation is the same as every other character's orientation, completely undefined. The show simply hasn't addressed that yet for anybody. Even showing interest for one particular gender doesn't set that in stone because bisexuality is always an option for character design. If you interpret a character as 100% straight or gay by default or based on insufficient information, that's on you. That has no bearing on canon, and even if it did, canon is not this rigid set in stone thing that must be followed to the letter. Star Wars has proved that. These kind of changes are not as intrusive as some people often like to pretend they are. Much like the prospect of gender select in The Legend of Zelda, it would be a very impressive talent to find a way to object to this without sounding like a complete tool. But so far, everyone who's tried to do that has failed horribly. I wouldn't recommend making the attempt.